Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to a tutorial about subsurface scattering. Subsurface, in case you don't know, is when light goes into a object such as skin in this case, basically goes into an object, picks up the color from whatever was beneath the object and then scatter. So in previous tutorials, I have textured this character in Substance Painter and brought it all in. And I have a base color attached, a specular color, and as well, and we're going to be focusing on subsurface. So the options that we have is weight, subsurface color, radius, and scale. I always encourage you guys to explore the arnoldrenderer.com documents for Maya because it will actually break down everything about the material. These are examples of people creating subsurface scattering, but the idea is that the light bounces, hits the skin or whatever object it is, and then bounces. However, light will hit it, pick up some of the color below, and scatter. So here's a really good example. So Legos are made out of plastic. Light should penetrate it, pick up some of the color, and bounce. So you can see how much more realistic it is when subsurface scattering is enabled. Now we can deal with color, which, you know, is color. We have a weight, which is the amount of subsurface scattering. So this is zero all the way to one. And by the way, I'm going to put this link in the description below so you guys will have access to it as well. This is our radius. Our radius just means how far the light will actually go through the object and then bounce back. So the higher the radius, the more the light will go in. And finally, you can actually change the color. Now, you have to be very careful with the radius because you can, in fact, make your object look like a candle. So yes, uh, if you want to make waxy objects, it's very easy with subsurface. But what we're trying to do is create a character, which is much more complicated. All right, let's take a look at our scene. I'm going to go into my perspective view and you'll notice that I already have a camera set up. This is going to be my render cam. And I also have a light behind my character. This is very important because this will show me the subsurface. I also have a light, which is just a regular directional light, which will give my character shadows. Now, she, I hit her hair, so she does have, in fact, hair. There it is. But it's important to see the subsurface scattering through the ears because it's all happening behind the character. So let's take a look at what that looks like right now. Okay, this is what we have so far as perspective. Let's go to the camera. So click on camera shape and press play. All right, I press stop and you can see that it's got a nice rim lighting here. So that's going to be really important because we can see light hitting the ears and things like that. And you can also see that the area light, I'm sorry, the directional light is giving us shadows around the nose and dark shadows underneath. So this is going to be very important when we're working on subsurface scattering because the reason we don't want strong subsurface scattering is that we want to keep the shadows. We are not made out of wax, so we want to make sure that when we're done with this, we still get those nice shadows. So I would recommend this setup when you get started on your character so that uh, have a bright light behind your character and then something coming on like 45 degrees so that you can get some shadows so you can see how subsurface is going to affect your character. Now I'm going to go back to the skin shader. This is just a regular AI standard surface. And what I'm going to do is just go ahead and turn off the weight of the base, the base color, and also turn off the weight of specularity because the only thing I want is for subsurface surface scattering to be viewed. Okay, so what I'm going to do is keep an image so we can compare before and after. This is my character with just the color and just the specular, no subsurface. So I'm going to click on this little camera to keep a snapshot. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and minimize this, turn everything off. I'm going to turn off my base. I'm going to turn off my specular so I can view just the effect of subsurface. So just for fun, I'm going to show you guys what it looks like with nothing. So if you ever got, wanted to create like a cute little cartoon where everything's black and these eyes are like, woo, this is the way to do it. <laughs> okay, so um, let's go ahead and turn on subsurface. We're going to crank it up all the way to one so we can see the effect. Now we do have subsurface color, which is going to be white, and then the radius, which is also white, and then we have the scale of one. Okay, this is what it looks like when it's completely white, the default. And you can see that the shadows have disappeared. So let's compare before and after. So the shadows have disappeared. The light is picking up everything underneath and scattering and basically making it look like a candle. Wax doesn't have too much of a shadow because light actually goes through it pretty thoroughly and picks up the color and scatters. First thing we want to do is add some subsurface color. So I'm going to go into subsurface and pick something a little bit pinky uh, and fleshy looking. Some people like to go a little bit more red and orangey. Some people like to go. So it's really up to the artist's choice what you want to go, but what you're trying to find is something that's a little bit pink because it's picking up our blood vessels and everything underneath. So we now have the subsurface color, but you can also see that the radius is really impacting it. So let's go ahead and pick another color for a radius as well. 
so you can see that the light has come in, picked up the scatter, picked up the color, and bounced back. Now let me show you what happens when I hide the directional light. This is where we really get to see the scatter. It's a little scary, but you can see that the light's coming in from the back, and you can see how much it's actually picked up and scattering it. It's, it's penetrating all the way through the skull, through the object, all the way to us, the viewer. So obviously it's too much. So let's go ahead and go back to the skin shader. And what we can do is reduce the radius. So this is important because the darker the radius, you can see how the light actually captures the ears around the mouth and so on and so forth. So it's looking a lot better just by reducing the radius because that means that the light is not scattering all the way through this, the object. It's actually stopping around the edges and bouncing back. So you can use the radius to control that. The scale is also something that we can use to control it. The ears are really strong right now, so if you like, you can drop it to like 0.7. And we're getting a different result. And I'm gonna bring this back. So let's see what it looks like with just bringing everything back. So we're gonna turn the base back on. I'm gonna go to my specular and turn that back on. And, let's, and I also turn on the light, the directional light. And you can see that it's really too strong. So that's why we need to reduce the weight as well. So what I'm going to do is change this to 0.2. And you can see how much nicer that looks. It's looking, she's glowing around the ears, she's glowing around the mouth, and so on and so forth. So now we can compare the before and after. And you can see how much life comes into this character. Where before she was so flat and simple, now she's got some really nice colors reflecting, going inside her skin and then coming out, which makes her look a lot more real. Some people might want to stop right here, but I'm going to show you guys how to create some subsurface color maps and radius maps so that we you can control it to make it look a little bit more organic. So for example, I really need little subsurface in the skull. I want more around the nose, the mouth, and the ears, and less around like the cheekbones and the jaw. So I need to create a map for that. So let's go ahead and take a snapshot of this. Bink. Let's go ahead and turn everything off again. So I'm turning off the base. I'm turning off the specular. The first thing I'm going to create is the radius map. Now I've already opened up the color map, which is what I'm going to use. And the first thing I'm going to do is actually save as. Now you can do this in Substance Painter, but I'm going to go ahead and use Photoshop. So this is going to be my subsurface scatter radius. And the subsurface scattered radius can actually just be a black and white map. So I'm going to go down here to the bottom right and choose hue and saturation and then go ahead and desaturate it. Let's go ahead and create a brightness and contrast, which I'm going to increase the contrast so I can get some really nice noisy noisiness and also reduce the, the brightness so it's a little bit darker because the areas that I want to be bright are going to be the ears, the nose, the eyes, and the lips, and everything else should be relatively dark. So again, I'm going to create another, let's see, another uh, brightness and contrast. Let's go ahead and reduce this one even four, increase the contrast some more, something like this. And I'm going to start masking. So over here to the right, make sure that you are in the top brightness and contrast. Make sure you're on the mask. I'm going to grab a soft brush. I'm going to flip this to white and I'm going to paint out the ears. Sorry, flip it to black and just kind of paint that in. Now my opacity right now is a 799, so I can kind of bring it slowly out. I can also go ahead and do the nose, the eyes, the mouth. It's a little messy, but that's okay. Maybe a little bit over here where the ears are. And if you want to make it brighter still, you can always go to this one and paint some of that out as well. But I'm going to go ahead and just show you what it looks like like this. And I also am going to add another layer and I'm going to use a soft brush. I'm in black, making using brackets to get a big brush. And these are kind of like the areas where I don't want to have um, too much subsurface, if any. You can always reduce the opacity if you feel like it's too strong. And I think I'm going to be okay with that again. It's kind of rough, but let's go ahead and check it out. So I'm in radius. I'm going to go ahead and save this. This is just an example. I'll save it as a PNG later when I'm done, but this is just to see what it's going to look like. Going back, I'm going to hide my directional light and go back to this. I'm going to crank this back up to one so I can see the effect. And I'm just going to go ahead and render what it looks like 
with the basic radius. It's a little noisy, but um, that's going to be part of render settings. Let's go ahead and take a snapshot. Let's go to radius, click on this little output. Let's go to file, folder, and this is under my subst substance painter folder. And let's see, subsurface scattering radius. There it is. Let's press play. So what you can see is that the white's really coming through the ears. You can see that there's subsurface scatter around her eyes, definitely in the other ear, and as well as the mouth. But everything else is actually fairly dark, which is great, which is basically what I want. Compare. This is before and after. It's kind of like what we want. But, you know, last time we had to get those red ears, we had color on it. So that's what we're going to do next. I'm going to head and uh, create a solid color down here at the bottom right. And I'm just going to try to get it to that red that we were using before, earlier. Go ahead and do that. I'm going to use overlay, which gives it a little bit of the scatter, and I'm also going to lighten it, something like that. The nice thing is I can always go in and change it. Won't let me save, so let's go ahead and call this version 2. I'm going to go ahead and change this over here. I can just type it in. Press play. And there you go. You can see the difference between this one and that one that um, I can always play with the color, make it a little darker, but you can see that it's working. The subsurface is working. That's exactly what I want. I'm actually going to make it a little darker if it lets me, just because I think it's a little much. Hopefully it'll let me save it. Sometimes it lets me save it and sometimes it see. Let me go back to the first one. Hopefully it lets me save it, but you usually have to save like three. It's kind of weird. Ah version 3. If anybody knows how to get around that, please let me know. That would be amazing. All right, let me go change this to 3. Okay, great. Now that we have the subsurface working, let's go back here. The other thing we want to do is, or the radius, the next thing we want to do is change the subsurface color. It's a little too even, and we want to make this work even better. So what I'm going to do is call, go back into Photoshop, and I'm going to File, Save As, and this is going to be my CLR, which is my subsurface color. Now, I don't need all this extra stuff because the reality is, is that I actually just need is my skin color plus a color layer. Now, this is a little much. I'm going to go ahead and reduce the opacity. And what I'm trying to do is create a map that is going to help still keep some of that color map but also make it a little bit red so it gives it extra information. So all those spottiness that you see here, that's going to be really important because the red is going to bounce around and pick all that stuff up. So instead of just being one flat color, it's going to have this really nice diverse map. Go ahead and save. And this is going to be attached to the subsurface color. So let's go to File, Little Folder, and let's grab the subsurface color right here and see what that looks like. So as you can see, the light's going in, scattering inside, and you can p it's picking up some of that texture and color variations. And that's what we want. To make it look more realistic, realistic, we should have this color variation. So now that we have this, we have our subsurface, we have our radius. We can also play with the scale if we want, but let's go ahead and crank everything up to one again. So let's, ch uh, let's take a look at the color. And by the way, I'm just going to take a snapshot just so we can see how weird that is. Uh, all right, let's see. Subsurface, it's a little strong. It's at one. I'm going to keep it at that just so we can compare it. And let's go ahead and press play. So this is one of the things that we have to be careful with subsurface because it will blow out your textures, right? So the texture map is active. Just to confirm, you can see. So you have to be very careful with the subsurface and the scale and everything because it can be a little bit too much. So you do always have to go in and it's a good idea to keep it at 100 so you can see it at full, but you also want to go ahead and drop the weight. I'm also going to go ahead and drop the scale. Now these values are going to vary because my head of my character is actually relatively small, so that all really depends on the size of your, um, your character. So if your character is enormous, then the values are going to be different. You might actually have to crank up some of these values. But, or if your character is tiny, tiny, you might have to even choose smaller numbers. So it really depends on the size of your character. And there you go. I'm going to snapshot that. And let's take a look at what we had before and then what we have after. So you can see that this looked okay, but by adding the subsurface scattered really adds this fleshy feeling to our character. It really adds to the model. 
And that's one of the key reasons why it's important that when you guys are creating characters to so use subsurface scattering and also to be able to control it so they can create some really nice looking and realistic characters. So let's start from the beginning how where we went. So here it is at the basic uh, shading. Um, we add, This is like the default so we can actually compare it. This is just with a regular subsurface scattering and this is with a map. So you can see how much, uh, much of a difference it makes. Uh, we started with this, with the backscatter, we added a map. Well, this is with the backscatter, then we added the subsurface color, 100% weight, and then here we go. That's how you can create subsurface scattering using Maya's Arnold. It really brings your character to life. I absolutely love subsurface scattering, and I really hope that you found this interesting and helpful. Uh, if you did, please make sure to give it a like. And if you feel that somebody could use this in their work or projects, please share this video with them. That would be amazing. And don't forget to take a look at academicphoenixplus.com for free tutorials, free ebooks, and free downloads and so much more. So take a look at academicphoenixplus.com and sign up for my newsletter. Thank you again for watching. I really appreciate taking the time with me to explore subsurface scattering. Uh, leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought and if you have any suggestions. And oh yeah, oh, one last thing before we head off. Uh, if you guys could tag me on your social media, that would be amazing. Uh, I'm in Instagram, I'm in Twitter, and I'm also on Facebook. So um, if you guys could tag me at, at Academic Phoenix, that would be really cool because I really enjoy seeing everyone's work. So thank you again for watching and I will see you next time.